So let me introduce our next and uh, last speaker of Tiny ML Asia 2021. It's Yan uh, uh, Xin from uh, Sinsense. He is an algorithm development engineer and he is going to present SPEC, which is a low power, low latency neuromorphic visual solution in a single chip. Okay, Yan, uh, the stage is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I believe that my colleague Felix has introduced a little bit and hope these slides can get you a little bit deeper into uh, what our technology spec is. So, and, uh, sorry. So the, the, the outline of, of this presentation, so um, because the Felix has introduced a little bit, so I'm going to uh, not spend too much time in introducing the neuromorphic sensing and computing itself. Uh, we, I'm going to introduce our Dynapsing technology as well as the Spike SOCs. Uh, finally, I'm show some applications of what they, what they can do. So the event cameras, uh, as described, is that uh, each pixel from the event camera is independent, which produces events only one detects a light change, and it is high dynamic range, producing no frames, asynchronous streaming in one signals. And it's very low power because it's no change, so nothing, nothing outputs. And for the uh, neuromorphic computing, we uh, here uh, specifically uh, we refer to the spiking neural networks. Uh, so it's, it's a kind of the network that runs on specialized hardware, which dedicated then for the spiking neural networks. And the whole network works in an asynchronous way. So any spec neuron can send all the specs at any time. And, uh, and how do we use these technologies with sensing and, uh, the, the, and the processing is we start from, we build this Dynapsian chip. So it has uh, some, uh, it's some fixed number of CN cores and allows you to run the spiking uh, convolutional neural, neural networks. And there is, fully event-driven computation on this chip. So there's no clock signals on it. And uh, further, based on what we realized, we very recently developed the, the Spike SOC. And uh, it is firstly integrates a dynamic vision sensor and a neuromorphic processor in a single die. So, and in the right-hand side, in the right-hand side, you can also see that we package uh, this chip in a very small module. <clears throat> and if we get in, into this chip, so a processing pipeline is showing in this figure. So we have DVS in the front and it allows you to do some event-based pre-processing and filtering. And to the CNN cores, we also provide the readout and the output interface allows you to use this chip to interact with external devices. And it is, super low latencies. So this GIF shows us uh, we implement a small experiments using the spike in the real time. So we put some digit on a rotating fan. Uh, the fan speed is actually the 800 RPM. So, and our spike could uh, efficiently and very quickly capture these, uh, these digit. And this uh, fully end-to-end event driven solutions. So it's from the outside, from to the sensing, to the computing. Part of this asynchronous, uh, it is also very low power. So we measure the, the dynamic power of it is less than five milliwatts. <clears throat> and, and actually the spike can do uh, more than just the standard feed forward structure. Uh, you can you can also do some residue like state scape connections between between layers, and you can also do some recurrent connections between the convolutional cores. So all this is possible in, on the spec. And we also uh, have very well developed software pipeline to to support the design of the of the essence of the applications. So from the data pre-processing. Uh, to the spiking neural network design and simulation, as well as the de deployment. And we have a full pipeline for this. 
And for our software framework, uh, we support both the ML and deep, deep learning domain, PyTorch and JAX, and also the brain nice in the, in the neuroscience domain. And we also, here we also show an example that we benchmark an open source data set. Uh, it's called Neuromorphic Amnest data set. And using the, our framework Synapse BPTT to train this, uh, to train this data set. And in the accuracy uh, column, you could see uh, our, our uh, simulation software can achieve the almost a state of art accuracy on the, on the data set. The red part is actually running on the chip, which means on the chip you got about 98% uh, accuracy on, the, on this data set. So this is really small mismatch between the so software simulation and hardware. And we're also trying to benchmark the, uh, the latency of the module. So it's, it's a curve that uh, is the latency against the accuracy. So we could uh, achieve more than 91% accuracy using only 15 out of 300 milliseconds of the raw data. And the application of the spike is, is can be extended to various fields. So in the age computing and some scenarios like the, the livestock monitoring, the, the toy market, the always on behavior analysis. So there's something like the, the uh, princess detection, the fall detection, uh, we have demos to show, and and here in the in the industry, so we show show some demos that we uh, using the spike. So this demo shows an, a smart dog bill demo, so which only detects the people when it approaching to the to the device, rather than just the pass 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 through this, uh, the DVS. And in the, in the next slides, we show a glance detection demo, which only detects uh, your, your, your front face very quickly, very low latency. And we found this can be applied to some autonomous driving to detect the, the driver's attention while he's driving. And also we show some four detection demo like so to monitoring if the, the elder people uh, fall in, in the room. And you could see it responds really fast. And uh, finally, we show a, a gesture control demo. That's, oh, sorry, the, the middle, the right character means a, a pause. So we have a, a active gesture which you you putting your hands in the center of your of the DVS, and and it can be deactivated. All right, and and here we also demo demonstrate uh, the development roadmap of our technology. So we start from the Dynapsin technology and trying to build even smaller, even more efficient and lower power. Uh, the neuromorphic visual solutions. So after Spike, we recently developed Spike Mini as well, which supports a lot of more pre-processing uh, algorithms and smaller die size and even lower power than the Spike. And also as mentioned, we uh, in October, we start, we start a, a cooperation with Prophecy, a DVI supplier company uh, to help us addressing some visual solutions in low light conditions. And we're also trying to make uh, as many scientists and engineers to access to our technologies. Uh, so we build several development kits uh, based on both uh, Dynapsin and Spike. So here is the Spike Tiny development case which is much more smaller than, than those. And thanks for your attention. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Yanan, for sharing uh, these interesting results and the roadmap. I think, again, the company has progressed quite a bit in the past uh, couple of years. So congratulations to the team. Um, several yeah. questions. Um, so you show the, the SOC at the beginning, and then you show the roadmap. Uh, what technology not 
did you use or what technology not this did you use for this type of chips what technologies not not what technology not like 45 65 nanometer what uh, 90 nanometer do you happen to know yeah, so I, yeah, I don't want to make a mistake here because I'm doing algorithms and I'm, I'm not sure about this. I'm sorry. Did you get me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can see you. We can see you. That's good. All right. So did, did you get what I said? Uh, no. So what uh, What was the answer on the, on the technology node? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm not pretty sure about this. So. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So the other question uh, on one of the slides, you mentioned that the dynamic power is less than 5 milliwatts. Um, and I was wondering what is the kind of the standby power, the... the uh, yeah, so, so we measure this uh, so the one to two milliwatts for the static power. So for the standby power, it's one to two milliwatts in dynamic, like five milliwatts? Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question is, um, maybe you can describe the process. How do you, how do you train your models? Like what, what, what is it involved in training the model in your case? Yeah, so so the training mode you can can use use many as many techniques as you can. It's training is, is totally offline. So we we have some pipelines that supports you you training standard AN to transfer to an, an very efficient SN module. And also we have some bio-inspired training algorithms. Uh, uh, like we also support uh, backpropagation through time. So this is more efficient. We can you can directly training SNNs. And also you can apply some neuroscience training uh, strategies like the uh, SDP, specking time dependent plasticity. Okay. And I assume most of the data sets are kind of your own data sets because I'm not sure, are there any publicly available uh, DVS data sets or most of them are kind of company type of university yeah. type of data sets? Yeah, yes. In, in the public, there's there's several uh, famous uh, DVS data set available, and many, some of them also from Prophecy, and some of them is for for research purpose, such as IBM Gesture data set, which is designed for uh, gesture recognition, and also the the the, the one I mentioned is called Neuromorphic Amnes data set, so it, it is uh, recorded using a DVS. So it's, it's transferred from the original AMNIST, standard AMNIST, AMNIST data set. Okay. And the very last question, you show these nice and small development kits. So if mm -hmm. people are interested in uh, uh, using them, how do, they, how do they get hold of those development kits? Yeah, so we, we, we have a standard application route in our website. So okay, so they just go to the website and apply, okay. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you, Jan, again. And thank you to our strategic partners who supported us, um, especially some of the key partners here. We've got uh, ARMF, uh, who help with hardware and software. Uh, the tiny, what's called Edge Impulse for uh, developers on, on, the, on, the, on the libraries. Uh, Qualcomm, Advanced AI Research as well uh, for their support in edge computing. Sintiat around hardware um, and, and ML training pipeline. So definitely thank you as well. Uh, Platinum sponsors, Reality AI um, for advanced sensing uh, with product and tiny ML. Um, Renaissance uh, for uh, microcontrollers and microcomputers. Our gold sponsors, Slayton.ai, Adaptive AI for the Intelligent Edge. Uh, Maxim Integrated, enabling edge intelligent devices. Seed Hardware, who, who also had present today. I'll quickly go back to them. Uh, thank you once again for all, all your support. Uh, SenseCML, build smart IoT sensor devices for data. Synthsets and um, our silver sponsors. So thank you uh, once again. Uh, it's been a great few days. Uh, look forward to 2022, as, as mentioned before, and hopefully see you at some of the future tiny ML events. Uh, thank you.